Um, it's not a question that um, a hobbyist uh, might want to uh, check the uh, cam and crankshaft uh, sensor output on a vehicle, right? Well, here's the circuit. Um, this is the circuit for uh, the Vitara, um, not to be confused uh, with my SX4 because there is a significant difference and I didn't even realize it until I'm looking at the diagram right now myself. Um, some of you may or may not recall that the crank position sensor on the SX4 is actually a, a variable reluctance sensor or an old school inductive type. So there is an analog signal on the line here as opposed to the camshaft position sensor, which was a Hall effect, which of course is a square wave. So if you take a look at this drawing, um, surprisingly, uh, it looks like both sensors, both uh, cam and crank, are actually Hall effect sensors. Uh, you can see we have a 12 volt supply actually coming in here from the main relay. 12 volts comes down, supplied to both sensors. Um, schematically here, they're showing us some uh, solid state switching. So that would be the switching within the Hall effect sensor itself. And I think because it's tied to two 5 volt lines here, you can see boys inside the uh, engine control module, that we can expect the Hall effect sensor simply to pull these two signals to ground. And I think what we can expect to see on both the cam and crank lines is a 5 volt square wave. On, uh, we'll start with the hand tech and we'll follow it with the Pico scope and we'll see if we can draw some conclusions. Um, of course, the pins are tucked underneath. So hopefully you can see I have both pins actually probed and you have to be very, very careful because although it's convenient for location purposes, pins 51 and 52 are of course right next to one another. And the last thing you want to do is go backwards by causing yourself grief by shorting something. Right. Go, uh, the two channels, the uh, channel one is the, uh, the cam and channel two, the blue channel, is the crank. Um, we'll know right away if I've got that backwards, but I don't think so. Um, I have the voltage, uh, the y-axis, set up for two volts per division. So we should see about two and a half uh, graticules uh, for each signal. And of course, the frequency will be much, much higher on uh, channel two, which should be, of course, the crank. So I will uh, go and start the car. We'll see what happens. Uh, the time base, I don't know if I've got the time base correct, boys. I usually just start with uh, 20. Um, my default settings are usually 20, 20 if I don't know the signal uh, for automotive uses, uh, 20 volts and 20 milliseconds, uh, and just work my way forward or backward from there. So it looks like we're, uh, we've definitely got a signal on the, uh, that looks to me like the uh, the uh, crankshaft, yeah, as the blue, channel two. And um, I don't seem to have a signal on uh, channel one, which I suspect is just a connection issue. Let me see if I can just wiggle the, peg, the pin a little bit. Didn't have the, the uh, shooter enough, I just didn't quite have the uh, pin set deep enough. In fact, I have to change the time base a wee bit. Let me go, let me get a wee bit more of the image in here and I'll show you why momentarily. We want to see the image actually repeating itself. Whoops, sorry. Finger trouble here, boys. Got the trigger on the wrong channel. Cam is channel one, of course. Channel one. Scope's trying to tell me that by showing it to me in yellow, but I didn't manage to pay attention. Okay, I'm gonna shut the car off. I'm happy with that and I'll show you why. So last time I checked, the camshaft on most four stroke engines rotates, rotates at a two to one ratio, right? So the crankshaft spinning twice as fast as the camshaft. Let's see if we can make some sense of that on the signal. So just off screen here is a duplicate of this this pair of pulses here, one wide and one narrow. Now the camshaft signal also ends with one wide and one narrow. So let's see here. So if this is the beginning of one full rotation of the camshaft from here to here, 720 degrees of rotation of the, uh, the engine. So does that make some sense? 
Can you see how we have a, a, a double white gap here with a single pulse and a single white gap with no pulse? So there's that single white gap in the uh, crankshaft position sensor. So that's 360 degrees from there to there. Does that make sense? Look at it in respect to the uh, camshaft position sense. So if that's 360 degrees, does it make sense that that is 720 degrees, meeting up with one full rotation of the, crank, of the camshaft? And there you can see the double pulses on the uh, camshaft again. So that does in fact make good sense. So can the hand tech 1080 or sorry 1008 Charlie be used for cam and crank relationship it certainly can in fact because this is eight channel we can actually go one better and actually add a synchronizing pulse okay boys so it's convenient that the drawing we're actually working from is actually the same drawing I used um, a week or two ago with respect to the discussion for the coil and plug operation so does it make sense that we can sync very, very close to um, plus or minus the advance, of course, on the uh, ignition? Um, but does it make sense that we can sync very, very close to top dead center with respect to whatever cylinder we choose? Uh, we'll go with uh, cylinder number one. So what we'll do is we'll actually take the trigger signal and we'll know when the, when the five volt trigger appears that cylinder number one is close to top, top dead back center. Probed for the trigger for the number one... Uh uh, coil on plug assembly. So the trigger signal for number one cylinder. That's good. I'm happy with that. Okay, let me show that car up. This is the uh, trigger signal for the number one uh, cylinder for its ignition. Um, so I think uh, we can assume that that is probably the indexation for the number one cylinder being near top dead center. Again, at the offset, um, we could expect some degree of advance. Now, of course, we could uh, we could measure the uh, we could pull up the measure function here. Um, we could put some cursors on things. We could measure how much apart this actually is. Um, but I think I, that's only going to confuse the issue. The point is whether or not we're capable of actually capturing a decent image. Uh, on the hand tech. Now there is one thing that I had to change here boys and I've had trouble with this in the past and I've kind of found a way around it and it's something I want to point out to hand tech users that may be of assistance to you. Uh, when I first showed you the uh, where I was pulling off the trigger signal on the uh, coil on plug assembly uh, itself um, there's a great deal of noise, ignition noise as you can imagine and the hand tech 1008 Charlie does not like ignition noise. It will lock up the system. It's constantly rebooting. It's frying its brain somehow. It's beyond me. I, I can't really give you a technical explanation, boys. All I know is if, the, if you subject this scope to, to high tension noise of any sort, you can lock it up and it becomes a real pain in the ass. So what I've done, and I'll just take you off the tripod and go handheld here for a second, is as opposed to being on the coil where I had you before, Sorry, I'm trying to look through the... I had you on the coil here, on the number one coil. Right in this location here is where it was back pinned, boys. You can see I'm actually back pinning that same wire. Sorry, I'll get you in frame here. I'm actually back pinning that same wire right at the plug for the uh, engine control module now. I've got this thing scaled up way too much. There we go. So you can see, and it makes a huge difference as far as because you're that much further away from the, uh, the coil itself, it doesn't lock up the uh, scope and it becomes quite functional. So that's a practical note that you'll want to keep. Going. Yeah, that, that looks plenty good. The beauty of the Pico Scope, of course, is it's got a big memory buffer. So we'll let it run for the full 32 frames, and then we'll see if we can pick a frame that shows us uh, the ideal image. Okay, good. So I'll stop that, turn the car off. Okay, so let's just step back through the memory buffer here. 
this is where the picoscope far exceeds the okay so that's a pretty good image actually that's that's kind of an ideal frame there so again there's the uh, there's the uh, the double pulse and the double pulse and then again starting with the double pulse so we know that that is uh, 720 degrees of rotation in the crankshaft strong points of the uh, picoscope is of course you can bring in a cursor so uh, i've got the cursor set up for 720 here now i had to i got interrupted with that light flashing in the background so i had to stop momentarily uh, so there's our 720 mark and then we can bring in some measurements so you can see your measurements up here it's in degrees and in milliseconds so let's just take it to the 360 point there's 360 degrees oh, just a wee touch i hope you can read that there 360 so 360 uh, starting from uh, the indexing point here, zero degrees, there's 360, and again, back at 720, a crank, which makes sense. Again, um, we've got the uh, single, uh, single space uh, with no pulse, double space with a pulse at the 180 mark, and then back to the 360 mark or zero mark if you prefer. So that makes sense with respect to the, uh, to the uh, crankshaft image and uh, also with respect to the camshaft image. Unfortunately, we don't have a third channel, so we can't bring in an indexing. Of course, we could dump one of the two channels and then sync on the uh, the ignition pulse again. That is a possibility, but um, you can't see both the cam and crank um, at the same time with the indexing with the sync pulse um, because, of course, it's two channels. That's fair enough. You know it's a two-channel scope going into it, right? So, uh, yeah, the Pico scope uh, is pretty solid uh, with respect to bringing in the markers and understanding what's going on, though. Uh, far better in that regard. So, very clear image. Um, but which one's better? Um, well, let's be honest. The image is far better on the Pico with respect to the Handtech uh, 1008 Charlie. Uh, you can get that third pulse you can see a sync on screen and you've seen it, it done a damn good job of it so um as that boys i think we'll leave it at that for one night they're both uh, pretty good images with respect to the cam and crank that's it cheers what are you doing in there come on god knows where you're gonna end up come on come on come on oh man